It's, it's, a, it, it's just something that you don't see very often. So much word that is preached that people call the word of God. I pray that God will bring forth his word, not only here, but, every, but in many places. But you know, the truth is he is. God is absolutely, he promised that every one that the Father had given to Jesus would come. He knows how to sow the seed of his word in a human heart and bring about the changes that need to be brought. But I'll tell you, there's a life that has to be conceived in people. And he goes on and he says, all men are like grass. Now he's talking about Adam's family. This is, the, this is the durability, if you will, the survivability of men. All men are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fall, and the, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word. Now we're going to get down to it. This is the word that was preached. God calls men to proclaim the good news of God's, wor of, of God's plan and God's call to human hearts. And where that word is received, something happens. Now he says, therefore, and he goes on to describe, therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. You see the same principle that we see in human life. You see someone who's actually been born of God's spirit, but they're not a whole lot like him yet. I, I dare say that describes most of us. That he's got a lot of work to do. But you know, the, just like the potential to be everything that Adam was in a sense, or at least our individual expression of that, is there in a newborn. If we have really been born of God's spirit, it's there. And the process is not a matter of educating people to be more religious. It's a matter of feeding, feeding the soul. And I'll tell you, it's the word of God. Whether that word comes from the pulpit, when God anoints something, or whether it comes when you spend time with him in prayer and he speaks to your heart, or whether you, you've opened the word and, and there's, a page, there's, there's a scripture that just leaps off the page right when you need it most. God speaks. He feeds the soul of his children and they begin to grow. That's the thing we need more than we need anything else. We need to hear, we need the life that, that, that flows from the very heart of God into our souls. It's his word. It's when he, when he talks to us, when he speaks. It's so much more than just information. It is information, but it's a word, it's encouragement. Sometimes it's rebuke. It's many things that we need, isn't it? But I'll, t I'll tell you, I, I want to just give you one scripture here that, uh, that highlights something I said, just about how, how much God is in charge of this process. Look at James chapter 1. And I'll just pick it up in verse 16. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. We've got someone who is absolutely rock solid dependable. A lot more, than rock, a lot more, than, a lot more solid than a rock. He, is, he defines unchangeability, solidity, dependability. But this one, he says, he chose to give us birth. He chose. Who does the choosing? God chooses. And I want to be one that he chooses, don't you? I want to occupy that place where, where his, he, he gives me what I need. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth. Why? That we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. This first creation that we are part of has been ruined. But it's God's purpose to create a brand new one, isn't it? So where were you and I created? Those who know the Lord, those who have been born again, where were we created? We were created in Christ. Just like we began our first life in Adam. We began our life in Christ. In Christ. We were there in Him. When He went to the cross, 
We went to the cross. When they laid him in a tomb, they laid us in a tomb. That's what it means to be united with Christ. It's not just taking on a little religion. This is a, this is a total repudiation of Adam and all he stands for. This is an embracing of Christ. It's an embracing of the very means of our, of our own death. Praise God. When he died, we died. We were there in him. When, we, when he was laid in the tomb, we were laid there with him. But when, we, when he came forth with a brand new life, we came forth. And ever since that time, God has been building a family. Paul speaks of the whole family in heaven and earth. It's the family of God. Oh, that's the family I want to be in. Because every member of Adam's race, every member, that, everyone that's in Adam, part of his family, is going to die. I don't care how religious you are, you're going to die. Every member of God's family in Christ Jesus will live and live forever. And the key to everything is God's will, God's word, when it comes to give us life. Because that's, that's when you get down to the individuality. That's when, just like you, you had a, po a point of conception and, and gestation and birth and all of the rest, the same thing happens in the spirit. God has to speak his word in such a way that it finds lodging in a human heart. And it begins to work. And it begins to produce life. And there's a process that, that's involved in that life, hearing and, and, and becoming aware and learning and growing in, in knowledge and coming to the point of, of faith and surrender and understanding to the point where there is a real birth that takes place. There's a change. Someone passes from death to life. That's how drastic this is. I'm not suggesting it has to be a cataclysmic experience or some great emotional upheaval. It can happen a lot of different ways, but, there, but the reality is that you pass from death to life. Yeah. Something changes that is permanent, that is eternal. Yes. You're literally born into the family of God as literally as you were born into the family of Adam. Yeah. And it's God's will that is absolutely being carried out. You know, I, I was thinking about this the process, and how foolish we are, all of us, at, at times, in trying to make things happen. Yeah. It's just about as foolish as trying to have a baby and say, okay, let's make it today. You know, we want to have the baby right now and not allow the process to work. Yeah. I'll tell you, as, as the church of Jesus Christ and as ministers who have his gospel, our job is to have God's word. It's to sow the seed out there, to scatter it. We don't know who's going to receive it or not. That's God's business. But it doesn't happen. You don't sow the seed and reap the harvest the same day many times. Never. It never. doesn't work that way. I tell you, if there's a harvest, then somewhere there's been some sowing going on. Paul said, I sowed another water, another water and God gave the increase. Apollos watered and God gave the increase. Our job is to sow that seed and pray and trust God to bring forth life. I'll tell you, the first time somebody hears the gospel, that, that, that doesn't, I mean, that, that just sows seeds there. That begins a work. There has got to be a searching out. There's, there, there's a development that has to take place. It's a radical transformation that has to happen in the human heart. We have got to fall out of love with Adam and in love with Jesus. We've got to come to hate the sin that we once loved. Only the work of God in our hearts that reveals the truth can, can accomplish that. 